I've never been in this part of the forest before. Let me get my stick. I always like to walk with a stick. Since many people said that the forest looks nice, I thought I'd explore some more of it. Every time I go here, I feel like I discover new places. <laughs> I believe this is actually a mountain bike trail. And uh, there's a lot of interesting things here. You hear so much. And back there is where this plane is that I showed once in a YouTube video, German Juice Fest. But now we're gonna go up this trail. I'll try to be as quiet as possible just to give you an impression of the sound. But yeah, this is definitely a bike track. <laughs> little stairs <laughs> they actually look like little stairs <laughs> now I know the ultra wide camera butchers the quality but uh, well, look at this this is where the hogs dig for the roots they eat can you see that like huge hole they dug in it on that side as well now the hogs do live here they do live here they find the tracks all around some kind of nut or something on a tree. Though I always hit it like three or four times straight and then wait a bit, hit it again. You hear the wind? Now, I don't know where this track will end or begin, so I don't know if I started at the end or at the beginning. You never know. It's funny. Little open place, so like this tree here. Don't know if it's annoying to constantly switch between cameras, but deal with it, I guess. most stable footage I guess because I'm holding it with one hand also walking with my stick but boy oh boy do you hear that? I don't know if you can hear it it's somewhere over there We'll get closer to it. Let me switch arms. Maybe that will work for the microphone, which is at the bottom of the phone. Just 
stop walking with the stick for now. Do you hear that? It's in this tree. There it went. Do you see it fly? That was the bird. It was using this tree to open a nut or something. I think I know where this track runs. Oh, it's over there somewhere. Can you hear that? I don't know if you can. But you just hear it ticking. Getting these roots everywhere. Running down. Look at that. Let me drop my thing. And the plane is behind those uh, trees. <laughs> Let me get my stick. Actually in getting all the other little sticks out of this, or off this stick. If you hurt my hand, but the bleeding has stopped, let me focus. There we go. <laughs> We've got to make some sacrifices, right? This is again such an open place with like just a tree here. You can hear one of those birds again. There's a little track running down there as well. Now I know where that will go because there's a path behind those trees over there, which I've walked before. So I roughly know where I am. I'm just really curious where this will go. Maybe it won't go anywhere. I don't know. But these mountain bikers come from somewhere, right? Maybe I'll get hit by one of them. You never know. On top. Doesn't this always resemble like some kind of brain cell structure or something whenever I look at trees? There he is. <laughs> Somehow it always reminds me of them. They're quite the singers. I nearly tripped. Look at these roots from this big a little friend up there I'm gonna put away my stick for now I'll just film a little bit more stable it's quite a step down <laughs> Yeah, we're getting in the part of the forest where I know where it will go. But I'll show you anyway, because it's really nice. If you look here, everything is already starting to basically blossom. It won't focus. There we go. Well, you just have to believe me then. I do hope it's not annoying that this angle keeps changing, but it's just want to show things. There's somebody coming over there. Another walker. Let me get back to you when I've gone across him. So we've just passed him. See where he went and where he came from. You can actually see the other path through there if you zoom in a bit. 
near those very green trees on the other side of these stumps. Who knows where this will go? I always find it funny that you have like these pine, sort of pine trees over here. And then they stop and then you have these normal forests here. And then sometimes you find these pine trees mixed in. There's some falling down on the ground. Seems to be a big old tree over there at the end. Now that I think of it, switching these angles must be very annoying. What is this? The core of the tree. Now what I do most of the time is actually bike through this forest with like all my produce in the back, so it's sort of a workout. And I've like 10 kilograms or 22 pounds in my saddlebags, or I don't know how you call that, and in my crate. Sometimes even up to 15 kilograms, so that'll be, I think, 35 pounds or 30 pounds, I don't really know. And, um, wait, I do know, that's 32 pounds, <laughs> if I calculated correctly. And that's quite the workout. It seems our path is blocked here by this dead tree. There's a lot of interesting trees here. They all have this weird tangling effect. This one especially. Good. Yeah, usually I just buy through here. It's a pr pretty good workout because you have a lot of... Uh, oh, here's the other path. See, people created a different path. Maybe animals too. But, um, oh, this fell recently actually. The wood is still fresh. It split right through. Something powerful must have struck it. Maybe lightning? It isn't charred. Look at that. Straight down the middle. You can see where it kept breaking. Let me know if it on my face. All the way up to here. That's where it stopped. And then something over there broke as well. Now the smell of fresh wood is so amazing. Look at this man. Nature's so powerful to just snap this thing in two. And it has these things on them. What's the bottom of that look? Alright. Funny, like ladders. All the way up. I like ladders. Pretty big tree. Yeah. Lucky that it didn't hit anything else. I always find that interesting. You see these little bird nests like all the way up there. Imagine being bored and sitting all the way up there. I personally don't like heights that much, but uh but there's more trees that fell over there. Let's go there and then we'll go back to the track. But like I said, a good workout with all those uh, pounds or kilograms of uh, produce in my bags. You really feel that, but it starts to work really quickly. Like, you will very quickly get a good cardiovascular endurance. Well, there's a lot of dead trees here, actually. But this is prime hog territory. I've seen many hogs running around here with their little ones, which will be coming very quickly. It's halfway through March. April will be coming. Oh yeah, I recognize the path that I wanted to take in another route. Alright, I don't know where I am. Here we have another dead tree. Let's switch to the ultra light to give you an impression of how big they are. Just to give you an impression, here's my foot. Let's not fall. Here's this tree. This tree definitely has a size game on me. Oh, this is a big boy, man. This wood, I'll try it out. All these leaves, I loved a few of it. Look how 
big this thing was. Yeah. It's huge. And I think this, one of these fell down. Oh, it's rotten, so it's not that sturdy anymore. It fell down from here. Yeah, that looks about right. We've had a lot of storms here in the winter. And I wrecked the trees. So this one still seems to be alive. So I've even found trees uh, past Sunday. It's Friday today, but past Sunday it was in Amsterdam with my brother and we went to this park and you had this one tree that was literally falling over and uh, it still had its roots in the ground so it basically just hanged at like a 35 degree angle and was still growing and was starting to get leaves so it's just amazing look at that man it's huge as trees look at it and something fell on top of this one and the funny thing is they had just all let the trees sit here when they're destroyed. I thought I heard something. I did not. Let's watch out, a lot of hogs here. They just let the trees sit around here and then rot away into the ground as you can see on the other side of this. If it will focus. Yes it will. Like you see there they become part of nature again. And you can hear so much sound. <laughs> but yeah just let it sit here so there's trees everywhere falling over trees on the other side in that little ditch there over here and again this one has all these mushroom type things on it shrooms they grow on top of the trees now, I don't know if they grow on them when they're alive or when they fall over it seems when they're alive okay. Such weird shapes. This on the side is a bit orangey, browny. And they go all the way on top. And this one just collapsed on the other. <laughs> it was this one. Something very powerful broke this apart. Just imagine something having the strength to rip apart a tree. And on the other side, you can see actually one still has dirt on its back end. Now let's get down to that track over there. And we will continue our voyage. Now this won't be very steady, but there's a big one over here as well that fell. If this turns out to be very annoying with the angles, I will still upload it when it is slipped. I think a lot of people will like to see a bit of forest. I believe many people are stuck indoors in some nations. I highly advise you to watch the interview from London Rail with David Icke. He has some very interesting points on the current situation. Always when I'm in these forests, man, everything starts to run. My nose, my eyes. Especially when I'm walking, going up hills and stuff. It really moves the entire system and the body. Everything in it. Oh, that will be interesting to see. Let's look up closely at his roots and stuff. Let's see. This was a big boy. Look at that, you can see all the way in there. Such a strange color for the ground underneath it. You can see all the roots and everything, oh, it's already rotten, like in there. Here. I'm gonna go this way. Well, yeah, like I said, David Icke has a lot of interesting things and views on it. Especially the things I uh, thought of myself before even seeing his video. But uh, you can watch the first 45 minutes of it or something. It's usually an hour and a half, but the first 45 minutes are free. And uh, yeah, I think I'll go into it. But what I find most interesting about this video is that 
This guy starts out by saying that he follows the interviewer then. It's a London real guy, I believe his name is Brian something, Brian Rose or something. Pretty interesting, by the way, that's name is Rose as well, but I believe his name is Brian Rose. At least his first name is Brian. But he, uh, look at these small little trees all standing in line. But yeah, there's, um, he starts the video out by saying, yeah, I truly believe it's a virus, we're gonna die, and, uh, it's very dangerous and uh, I'm following, I will get my shot, my vaccine when I need to, I believe it's gonna work, maybe you can talk me out of it uh, David, but um, I will uh, follow the uh, government advice, stay home, self quarantine, blah blah blah, all that nonsense. And then uh, during the video you see that he agrees with David, but he has to my, to me it, it just comes across as like he has to affirm certain things with his interview. And he desperately tries to do so, but he knows that it's all nonsense. It's really funny to see. But David Icke has a lot of good points on it. And uh, I would definitely advise you to watch it. It's very interesting. I don't know how long I'll make this video. But look at that. It's like a V sign. A V. <laughs> funny, they both fell two different ways. And then, oh look, those connect. Funny how that works out. Yeah, so many trees were devastated in this winter. But this one is just. You hear that? I don't know what that is. I think it's a bird. A hog makes more noise through the leaves and everything. I'll keep my eye on it. If it is a hog, I will need to find a tree I can climb in. Oh, there's enough. Definitely. Those beasts are very, very fast. I was once stuck in a tree, I think I told this before, but I was once stuck in the tree because <laughs> there was an entire family of hogs nearby that I didn't notice them until very late. So I had to jump into a tree. I was basically stuck in it for half an hour, seeing them rummaging and rummaging around. And then they went their merry way again. This one fell as well. But yeah. That's not a hog. We're very close to a road in the parking spot as well. So yeah. But yeah, a lot of, uh, oh look, somebody says help. Help. Well, I don't think this tree is in a position to be helped. Look at all these storms, they wreck the trees. Man. But then again, this wood will turn to compost and create biodiversity. Although I hate the word diversity nowadays, but it will help the soil. Very much so. Now the wind is actually getting pretty chilly. So I think I'll put on my gloves. I've actually read about people being stalked by hogs. Not knowing they were there. <laughs> Must be very scary. Because those they're so fast and they're, they weigh like 70 kilograms, which is, I believe, 140 to 150 pounds or something. And that's only the females. But the males, they can become even bigger, 80 kilograms, which is about 170 to 180 or something. I believe 180. And uh, believe me, you don't want to get a swoop from them. Now, I think if I go straight ahead and then to the right. I can go to the right here as well. This part I've been before, but I've never went right here. I never went right here. So yeah, join me on this expedition while I put on my other glove. It's pretty cold today, even though a couple of days ago I was just sitting in the sun without a t-shirt. It's like 15 degrees Celsius, which is I believe below somewhere between 50 and 60 degrees Fahrenheit or something. But very warm in the sun without wind. 
There we go. That's better. All right. Just look at it. Now the easiest way to spot a hog is to look for something that looks a lot like a hairy dog and runs around very low. And because they run around very low, they make a lot of sound if they run through leaves. And they make, of course, more sound if they bump into anything or something. But uh, they can be very sneaky, supposedly, because some of them sneaked up on me, maybe because I was distracted or something. There was a lot of wind and sound back then. But one time I came across this family of... Uh... Oh, I can even use my screen with my gloves, that's nice. But one time I came across this family of hogs, like I said, and I didn't hear them because I was on my bike, panting and puffing, I was going up a hill. And they crossed the road in front of me and they ran through the leaves and that's when I heard them. Or hurt them because doesn't that look like the structure of brain cells and stuff or when they show these I don't know what it's called you probably get what I mean it always reminds me of that of like nerves or something everything in life is so reminiscent of everything around you Now sudden movements and sound as well, that's a very good tactic as well. Sudden sounds or snappy sounds that they're not used to, which usually humans make or create, scares them, or makes them move or gets them curious. I don't really want to have the latter because then they'll come after you, but uh... Look at this old tree over here. I have to zoom in with my nose, the sacrifices I make. You can see it's in coming to deteriorate into sections. Very interesting. That's where we're coming from. But yeah. This is an interesting tree. <laughs> Again, these things. One of them was torn up, it seems, over here. So they actually dig themselves into the skin of the tree. Interesting. Let's see if we can. That's the blood of my thumb. <laughs> Here we have this. So, yeah, they become part of the tree. It seems they can rot. Just like the tree itself. Let's see if I can get that in focus what we can. There we go. So, I tried to change angles with my nose, but then I hit the stop recording button. But we're still close to that tree, it was over there. But here we have this moss. Is it a big load of prey? It is. There's a bit of moss. It's so soft. It's amazing. <laughs> when we were in the Boy Scouts, which was not really only for boys, but we had boys and girls mixed in. We just called it scouting. Um, but yeah, when I was in that, we used to make camp because we used to sail. We had, it was on the sail uh, branch of the scouting. And... Um, we used to make our camps on beds of moss, which was really soft. You can see it, it's just like a pillow. Look at it. You just see it, it's soft. It would require less of a uh, big mattress to be taken with us. But of course, mixed boy scouts or mixed scouting, which would get really interesting by the time you would get 13, 14, 15, 16. I mean, uh, those stories you better keep to yourself, eh? You can imagine. Fun times, very fun times, a little more destroyed trees. I find it funny when I get here, like, there are no problems, it's just calmness, birds, nature, no biggie, nothing, just this. tree has like a different stripe on it. It's a little birdie. 
And my mother and I once stalked a pair of sparrows here when we walked here before. Somewhere in this forest. I don't know if it's this track or another one. I think that's pretty too. But uh, eventually we found them. They're really hard to spot. Now look at that. <laughs> they are really hard to spot. You can follow their sound one thing, and then suddenly they're somewhere else. And the funny thing is, when you start listening for sounds, you will basically hear anything and everything you think you hear. You actually don't. It was the same when we were sailing on uh, our little uh, Lely Flats, which is what the boats were called. I'll show you a picture of it. Basically, boats with two air compartments, the front and at the back, so basically foolproof. <laughs> They were made of steel, and uh, all the other boats were, of course, made of polyester or, for example, um, they have some sort of plastic or something or um, some very uh, light fiber. So if they bumped into us, oh, that would have caused many problems for them. So when we would um, close in on these boats, you would usually call what kind of type of boat you were, and depending on that, you would uh, go out the way or not. And we would just always scream steel, and then everybody would go out of our way little brats we were but uh i remember this one time when uh, we were on this boat and uh we were um, having a uh, competition between all the other scouting uh, branches like from different parts of the country and then you would go to what was called uh, niwaka so n-e and then waka with a k so w-a-k-a -A, which was basically the dutch version of the international scouting meeting or boy scout meeting or whatever you want to call it and we had this sail competition with everybody and everybody was constantly screaming steel but then everybody realized wait everybody is steel so nobody will go out of the way so we couldn't cheat our way out of that which was really funny but yeah i loved sailing i still love it basically sometimes some friends ask me to go sailing but it's really nice <laughs> This is gonna be an hour long video, I already feel it. <laughs> you guys just have to deal with it or not watch it. Man, all these sounds. This little birdie in the middle of the road. See that? There he is. Took me a long time to switch camera angles with my nose. What is he doing? No, he left. There we go. And these little pine things on the ground. But some of these paths, you can see that they're a bit older because they have these little cobblestones in them. So people used to travel here more often. Then they would throw around these stones to give a bit more grip. And another bird. Right there. So we're sitting in these branches. We call that Miro. Miro, I don't know what they call it in English. It's a robin, I believe. But I'm not too sure. I believe it was a robin because I had to look it up for a different video. Here you can see the other trees behind. This one goes wrecked as well. Oh dear. Beautiful tree, though. I believe that if you look at the height of a tree, I believe its roots go like twice as deep or something. So if you just look at some of these trees, like how big they are. Just imagine how deep they go. And I believe in America you have these, this kind of reservation spots where they have trees that are what? 60 to 100 meters tall or something. So let's see, 300 to 5, I don't know how much feet that is. Let's see, 100 feet is 30 meters. Yeah, it's about 300 feet or something. Imagine being that tall, how deep the roots will go. And how much such a tree has seen or experienced. Look at this, this is probably from this tree. Because the smaller ones are branching out that way. Oh, somebody wrote something over here. It says Brandweer, which means fire department. That way. Alright. 
I don't know. Uh, I know this path eventually will lead me to the golf course, which is close, of course. But, uh... A lot of people come in these forests and ride things on trees and stuff. There's one tree near my house, actually, near a very small patch of forest, which you can basically walk through in like five or six minutes, where people have written a date on trees, like they engrave them in the trees. And then their little hearts and then their letters, their initials. And there was one from 1937, one from 1920-something, and a couple from the 60s and 80s. Now they don't anymore, but... But then they did. Funny. Uh, we, our bodies, can pass on. But our acts and our thoughts and our influences can remain and influence others. Here are these cobblestones. So this used to be a more traveled road. But yeah, don't think you're... What on earth is that? There's this little ball in there, but it's part of the tree. Funny, the same thing as on the side of that. But yeah, like I said, our actions and our thoughts and the influences they have, they can outlast our bodies way, way longer. So feeling despair and being scared is never really a good thing. Now I wonder, where does that go? This is always the problem I have in these forests when I always see one path and think, oh, I want to go there. Then. But I want to go there as well. Let's see. I know where that goes. I don't know where this goes. Let me take this path. It's to come. So I, I'm hearing planes again, but jet planes, like commercial planes. I haven't heard those in a while. Look at this, this beginning little tree. So the commercial jets are flying over again. Of course, spraying their goods. A banana peel. No, it wasn't me. I have not been here before. At least not this trail. Just always wonder how... Oh, by the way, you can actually make tea of this. So if you take these branches and put it in tea, it's actually really tasty. Really nice, smells good. But, um... I always wonder how these forests would have looked if they were not cultivated or planted, like they are in my country. How would it all have looked all those years ago? How would it have made the world look? Interesting thoughts. Here we have different trees. The big patch was a little birdie. What I also like is the sound of the wind and these trees rustling and then you can hear the trees cracking and everything. Maybe I can make you hear it. It's just, that looks like it's charred or something, but it's actually the thing they excrete. This one looks charred as well. Here it comes. Hear that? It's one of those nuts. Oh, here comes the wind. There's a bird nearby. There he is. It's a sparrow. Can you see him? There he is. See him? On the top. <laughs> that was a little sparrow. Here comes the wind. I think you could see the sparrow, but here are these different type of trees. Usually I would see these trees in like a swampy area. And these trees always bend. Like with the wind and stuff. These type of trees, you see them close to the coast as well in the Netherlands. 
the dunes and, and such. Well, you can really see. Let me just use my nose again. The path going over there, it's really beautiful. But yeah, like I said, in the dune area, you have these trees as well. Like they're bending because of the salt water and everything. They look very rugged. I love this, just seeing these little paths in between, wondering where they would go, who uses them, which animal uses them. Oh, the sparrow's back, I can hear it in the back. <laughs> Oh, there's that guy again. It's the same dude. There he is. Alright, I'll stop filming again. People don't like to be filmed in the uh, forests. And I'll catch back to you guys when he's passed. So I found this sort of purple, orangey stone. Now, it'll probably look less impressive on YouTube, but. <laughs> Still amazed by this camera on this phone, man. <laughs> nice. Let's put it back. There we go. Yeah, that guy, we crossed each other again and he said, um, the tweede keer is tracteren, which basically means the second time we pass, you have to uh, um, pay me a round or pay me something nice, give me something nice. <laughs> It's the same with birthdays here. When people get in the Netherlands, they always are amazed that when, for example, expats or something, or they have their children on school, and then when it's their birthday, they actually have to bring like a treat or something. Or maybe there's another. This one is actually red. Oh, so it's a bit weird with. Yeah. Let me get it in the light. <laughs> oh, there it went. Everything is always harder with like gloves and everything. But um, yeah, people are always amazed that when they get here and it's their birthday, they actually have to give others a treat or something. Or they always expect that when it's their birthday, they get something, but it's always the other way around. And it's the same when people uh, tease you or something, they ask you to give them a treat. So for example, um, some kind of fried treat or some whatever drink or something on your costs. <laughs> it's funny that he said that. Hear that? It's going that way. And it's a bird, I hear it flapping. Would be worrying if that is. Oh, you hear that? It's calling. Sounds like it's laughing at me for my pathetic whistle. Look at this man, let me switch. Should he... Ultra wide. It's just amazing. These trees, man. I... I wish I could show you the coast this summer, but I don't know how things will develop, of course, but I do want to show that. It's so beautiful there. And every time I go there, I'm just lucky that it's good weather, but just look at these trees, man. I've been to Denmark and Norway as well, and Denmark looks a lot like the Netherlands. It's a bit flatter. It's really quiet there, so a lot of nature. It's like, I believe, two or three times. So look at these ants. You see him walking? Yeah, they found something. I don't know what they found. These are red ants. So I'm not gonna linger too much, they're really big, oh. I'm not gonna linger too, oh, this is a party over here. What have you guys found? They're already walking on my shoes. Just get off, get the fuck off me. Let's check myself. Oh, they're everywhere. Good God, don't want those, have those in your shoes, but um, like I said, Denmark, a lot of like the Netherlands, let me check again. 
see if we don't have anything on our shoes. These are really nice shoes, by the way, but they don't make them anymore. Oh, here's one. Get lost. Here's one, too. Man, they're... Look at him. I don't want to kill it, but... Damn, its legs are huge, man. Get lost. Oh, it's stuck. That's why. Come here, bro. Don't worry. There we are. You were stuck, eh? I can imagine. There we go. You're free. Oh boy, oh boy, there's more. This might be my last video. I once saw this horror thing where they were eaten alive by these giant ants. Maybe that will happen to me as well. Let's see, are there more over here? No, they were just there. Alright, oh, there's more. Alright, let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> Am I good? I'm really clear. I don't want to get bitten by those ants. Yeah, we're clear, I guess. Yeah. Right, good. Very good. But like I said, Norway, um, Denmark is like, I believe, two or three times as large as the Netherlands and only like one sixth of its. No, no, that's, that's, that's way too much. Um, it only has like less than half of our population, so. It's really big compared to the Netherlands in the sense of how many people there are and how much space there is. So it was really quiet, but Norway is even more different. They have like probably five or six million inhabitants or something. That country is huge, man. You could drive for hours and never find anyone. Through the fjords, over the mountains, back to the fjords again. It was just so beautiful. I heard moose there. Which has a really interesting sound, what they make when they call. And they're really big. Um, so much beauty there, man. Makes you realize they could have imagined their myths and everything, which, with which they told their version of the world and how they saw things and the way you learned about the world and everything else. You can imagine that that influenced where they lived. Oh, look at this. So yeah, I don't know what those ants were eating, but uh, whatever it was. It sure as hell is dead. No, I didn't really want to cuss in this video or swear, but as you can imagine, that was quite a sinister moment in my life. Leaves and everything. I know where I'm at. I know. I've been to these forests so much that some parts I literally know by head just by looking at them from a different angle or distance. And I know like, oh, that's where I am. Or that's what that is. For the last, yeah, three years now. I've been living here for three years. For the last three years, I basically went here every week. And it was a little while in the winter when I didn't go. I was just longing to go. What's that? Not sure. <laughs> Had an interesting conversation with my mother on the phone, just on my way here. I had sent them all some links and some information that I found, basically what is in John Rose's video, what I, what I caught without my, um, what I got from my own research about the current situation. She agreed with mainly almost all of it. Some things she wasn't sure about, some things she didn't agree upon. But the funny thing is, I said, well, maybe they try to, uh, you know, force some shots on everyone. Um, of course, Denmark already has its law passed where they can force you to take shots. I'm not going to use the other word because I think the algorithms of YouTube are deleting everything, but basically, vaccine, you know what it is. Um, Maybe you should probably delete this, who knows? But, um, and she said, like, um, well, when you were a child, I never gave you a lot of shots, only three. The ones I couldn't get, uh, uh, I couldn't get you out of. That you basically had to get them. They basically give you when you were born. You can refuse some of them. They would just give them to them, to the children. Uh, but she said, the rest I never took. I believe it's nonsense. It's putting a chemical cocktail into children. And she also said, if they tried to force that 
right now with the current Chris, I will never take him. I will never. I better just die than take him. So I found that very interesting that you said that. And uh, also not a few things you said that were very interesting. So yeah, a lot of people are aware of what's happening right now. And uh, I think what they're trying to do now is going to heavily backfire on them. Because they're going way too quickly with this. And even though there's this nightmarish craze and fear around, I still think they're going too fast. And people are becoming aware, and a lot of people are aware of this. I mean, one of the most trending terms right now is plandemic instead of pandemic, so that'll give you sort of an idea. But yeah, one of the most important things is do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. <laughs> Look at that little tree. Sometimes I have the idea that some of these branches just fall into the ground and form another tree. Definitely there's pineapple. <laughs> Pineapples. Uh, how do you call those things? I keep forgetting what they're... We call them den apples. <laughs> these things. Pines? I don't know, I forgot what they're called in English. Sometimes just randomly forget these English words and then after the video when I watch it again. Just because sometimes I watch my own videos out of boredom or something. I'm like, oh yeah. Now I know the word, but I didn't know it at the time, but... Um, I forgot my train of thought. Yeah, I think it's going to backfire on them. They're going way too quickly. A lot of people are aware of things. And... Uh, a lot of people are aware that they're trying to achieve cert certain things and some things. Um, and they're using this care and craze and fear-mongering to achieve it. So who knows where everything will go, but uh, do not be afraid. I mean, fear is an is a uh, all-encompassing thing that will eat away at you. And uh, being fearful hits you way too hard. You should not be. Maybe they can force you to do something in the end through legislation, but even then, you have a choice, if you know what I mean. You always have a choice. You always have a choice. And that bird is furiously <laughs> singing. Where would it be? Usually I can spot them pretty quickly, but this one is a bit further away. I always wonder how these small birds make so much noise. Like I've had these birds next to my window and trying to sleep and then just look outside and see this, this little blob. Like it's not even bigger than this thing. Just put my foot on. They're like this. This is their body and then they have just like this very little beak and everything. They make so much sound. It's amazing. Well, it must be very tiring to be a bird because if you're constantly singing the entire day. I always wonder, what do they do when they sing? Like, do they just do it to pass time or do they sing because they communicate? Uh, of course, I think it's part of that too, but do they just enjoy themselves? I don't know. They must enjoy singing because they do it the entire day. Look at all these things. The name. I can't remember the English word. Oh, look, they have different colors. Some of them have recently fallen, others have been laying there drying. Funny. Once when I was younger, I ran into the forest without shoes. Had five of those things hanging my foot. I regret that. It's the only way you learn, I guess. Yeah. But like I said, don't be afraid. not be afraid just do the very best you can right now focus on yourself you're like a little droplet in an ocean of droplets your ripple effect will reach other people whether they want to hear it or see it or feel it or not it's not up to you but uh, just focus on yourself do the very best you can for yourself and for the others directly around you help anyone you can be in the present be in the here and now and when the rest will come you shall see it come. And whatever it brings, it will bring. But be aware of what's happening right now. Educate yourself. That's all you can do. But do not let it overtake your life. There's so much more. And isn't it funny that when I'm right here right now, oh, no problem. There's nothing.
Just less. And nature. And wind. And that bird that just keeps going. <laughs> Seriously, does anybody know how these birds make so much sound? And in about 10 minutes, I'll be back at my bike. I think this video has been long enough. Don't even know if anybody will watch it fully. But I thought it's nice to show some. There's this one other big tree again that fell. Oh, here he is. Somewhere. <laughs> Can't spot him right now. See this tree. Isn't it amazing that trees just lose all their leaves and looks like they're dead? And then, come spring, they just all boop, pop back into life. I was like walking in the sand. Yes, I hope this video uh, made you relax a bit. And uh, enjoy the surroundings if you don't have anything near you. The smell of this forest is amazing as well. I usually there are so many people here when I go here because this is really a very popular spot, especially amongst bird and wildlife spotters. Of course, far as wildlife can go here, but there's no one now. Of course, it's it is a Friday, so people are still working from home or at work. I got a couple of days off, but. Very quiet. The only person I came across is that guy twice. And then of course tried to hustle me. Get some kind of treat for me. Unimaginable these people. Like there's all new trees over there. They're growing there inside that little loopy. There's the other part of the forest we're walking in. You can see the difference. There you have all the leaves on the ground. Good news, I have not yet been bitten by these ants, so they're not in my shoes. Isn't it funny how they immediately swamp your legs? Do pity that one guy though, because he probably wanted to get off that one end, but he couldn't. <laughs> he was stuck in my shoelace. Says access denied. Resting place for wildlife. And it says call the line at low, which is basically the area. We'll probably get this guy from this road because he was walking this way. Let's see if we can see him. Ooh, pretty hilarious. Oh, he's not there. He will probably come from this side. That was otherwise the spot I would have gone to if I continued instead of went right at that one spot. Where I was curious. Yeah. Oh, they stole the sign over here. <laughs> That's mainly the same sort of sign. I think I'll walk it out now anyway. To show you where I can park my bike. Even that parking spot is beautiful. And this spot here is beautiful as well. As far as I know, this weekend that we will have sun again, so I'll be sitting in the sun a lot. Recently we had sun too, and I was sitting in the sun for like three, four hours straight. Even got a little bit of a tan. Funny thing is, when I go here, I have to bike like roughly an hour to and an hour back. And then I usually walk for about an hour to two hours, so it's a lot of exercise. And this is the type of exercise I like the best. Just look at that one, how beautiful that is. Can I get a wide shot? Let's use my nose. There we go. Oh dear. What is it doing? Oh. Alright. Let's see again. 
It's very funny because if you come here in the morning, you see so many animal tracks. You're not allowed to go on that spot over there because it's the resting place of animals. And most people actually respect that. You can see you've got the entire flocks of deer running around there and, and these mountain type of goats. There's no mountains here, so they just run around in the hills. But uh, sheep flocks, or flock of sheep. Um, also, this is of course the national park that I always go in. The part of it, oh, you can see water over there. You see that little spot? It's a drinking space. There. That's where they go and drink. What else would it be called a drinking space for, you might ask? Indeed. But there's wolves around again in this park. A couple. I think I mentioned that last year that there was like two of them with like a, a little one. But now that I've actually been hit by a truck one, <laughs> which is sad, so he's dead. He was uh, pretty dead when they found him, but um, there's more of them now. About uh, close to a dozen. So wolves have returned, which is interesting because they haven't been here for like a couple hundred years or 200 years or something. They say they migrated from the north of Germany into here. Maybe even Denmark. I believe there's only a couple of them in Denmark. But yeah. This always brings me to calmness. What was that? See, sometimes you hear things in them. That's a sparrow. It has to be a sparrow. What just amazes me about walking around here is all the different sounds you hear. The sound of the sand, the sound of your feet hitting the rocks, different sounds from the sand, the sounds of the wind hitting different trees, birds. Different types of light, different types of trees. Here's another of those signs. Try to pronounce that if you're not Dutch. Good luck with that. I always wonder, do they learn their own types of sounds? Like the birds, do they sing all the same song or do they have their different version of it? Or do every single species of birds have their own versions and then individual birds make up their own? Or are they all copycats? Who knows? And do different birds understand each other? Or is it like with our languages? I think that's the most interesting thing about life is that you know you will never know everything. And the more you know, the the more you know, you know nothing. Infinite possibilities, infinite things to learn. But in this life, a finite, a finite, I don't know how you said it, finite amount of time to use. And nowhere near enough time to learn everything. But I think that is the beauty of life, you know, if you knew everything, then what is the point of this life? That's the mystery of it all. And if you knew everything, there's no point to this life, I guess. It still sucks that we have these psychopaths running around, trying to keep everything in their schemes, but who knows what will happen with that? Who knows? I think I'll leave it at here. And I walk back to my bike, which is basically that road for another five minutes. But uh, this video has been long enough. Hope you liked it. Don't think anyone will watch it till the end, but you can watch it in parts or whatever you want. But I uh, hope you got outside today or tomorrow or the other day. 
get as much sun and or light as you can. And uh, enjoy it. Oh, there's a little birdie here. You see? Up top. There he goes. Hmm. And there he went. See you in the next one.